Hi guys, welcome back to the Wigger Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Robin in the chair. How are we doing? Yeah, good. You good? good? How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, man. I'm good. So what's the plan? What are we doing today? Um, I'm a, I am guess I'm a COVID buzz cutter. Okay. So I, I've buzz cutted it since since COVID. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't been like fussed about it. Okay. Like just kept getting going to like little barbers here and there and everywhere. But yeah. it's like... I guess I haven't really thought about how I could get the perfect buzz cut, so to speak. Like, what oh, would be good okay. for my face shape and stuff? I just normally do like long on top, a bit shorter on the sides. Okay, okay. So I'd love to just know, like, short hair, simple. I've loved that bit of it, but like, what's good for my face? Like, how it looks as good as you can, so to speak, with quite a simple haircut. Right. Okay. How how old is the haircut? When did you get it cut last? This is probably three and a half weeks. Right. Okay. Biggest thing I'll say to you, right, yeah. is. When you're changing a haircut, no matter how short or anything like that, skip the next haircut before you change it. So you're you're kind of here a bit too early. Okay. Because if you're looking for a change, three weeks old is not much for me to change, if you know what I mean. Because if you if you'd have left it longer, I could have seen what more hair would have done to your face shape. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So you're always best if you're going for a new look, try and just skip a haircut in your mind. So if you're every an every three week uh, haircutter. Yeah. Leave that when you get to that three weeks, just leave it, and yeah. then come come and see me in the, in the following three weeks. Just because I need a bit more length to, to fully be able to change it around if I need to. You see, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I was looking to change it. To be honest, I like like the simplicity of, of oh no. and stuff. No, no, I'm saying I'm not saying you're looking to change, it, but you asked for like the perfect buzz cut. So oh, fine. Something's so. gonna have. If you want my opinion on it, I might I might think that something might need to be changed to make it perfect for you. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um. So because it is so, I mean. Because it is so sort of fresh, yeah. essentially, it, it is hard to, to change anything around. Because yeah. um, I think looking at yours, I would probably, I'd probably have more of a one length all over for your face shape. Okay. I probably would. I probably wouldn't have too much of a contrast okay. between the top and the back and sides. Um, but it's kind of hard to do that today because it is it is only three weeks old. All right. um, do you see what I mean? It's yeah. not a negative, like, I mean, just, I'm just trying to give you advice, you know what no, I mean? I'm just, like, you I'm look like, a bit gutted, like. And I'm, I'm, like, like I'm like, I'm sorry, I should have done No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Like, you've, you're, you're here for advice, right? This is just advice. This yeah. is advice. And, and don't forget, this is for the camera as well. So this is advice to anyone watching who wants a new haircut to skip a haircut. Just skip one haircut. Yeah. Because then that way you're giving the barber six weeks, more than three weeks to try just and do it. To work with. Well, it's someone else's haircut still, yeah. essentially. Like, whatever your barber's done to your hair last, it's still going to be in there so fresh yeah. because three weeks just isn't long enough. Yeah. Um, but six weeks, man, it helps to like maybe if someone's thinned your hair out wrong, someone's put your crown too short, someone's gone too high on the side. It gives us that extra bit of length yeah, that we can alter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That we can play with. All so right. that's why I always say just try and skip it. So it is going to be a challenge to make something perfect for you today because I think you need a bit more. I, I if I was you, I wouldn't go so short on the back and sides. Okay. That, but that's you're, you're asking for my professional opinion. Yeah. That's my professional opinion. I wouldn't go so short on the back and sides, but we've got it short already. So. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> no, you don't have to apologise. It's just that when you're asking for the perfect buzz cut, I just need a bit more room to, to play around with to give you to give you what you think I, I, I think is the best. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a tough one on that one because uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would, if we're looking at your hair and yeah. looking at your face shape, if we look at the way, so, so even on a buzz cut, you can still follow these little rules, right? It, so I use a comb to, to dictate where a blend needs to be or how high a, a, a back and sides needs to be because, or what angle we need to connect the sides into the top, right? So if you look at that, mm. that's you've got a pretty prominent bone structure here. Mm -hmm. And if you look at where that lands, that needs to be cut out like that. Right. You see that? See that there? So because obviously you've been going really high and tight, it's doing that. Yeah. So it's I think it's widening your face. Yeah. Right. Whereas if you kept a bit more length on the back and sides, I went short on the top. That would balance out. Interesting. The face shape more. So I don't. But the problem I've got today is that if I want to make that work, I've got to go to this to a similar length as the back and sides. But I think that's too short for the top. Interesting. So if I was you, I would probably say your perfect length. If we're looking for the perfect buzz cut, I would say the perfect length for you is probably a three all over. Really? Yeah. It's almost the opposite of what I've done. Maybe a four and a three, potentially, yeah. It's almost the opposite of what I've done, because I always thought, like like you say, my my ears like stick out a bit, and then my head goes like this. So I thought, okay, you go longer here, keep this bit, and then go really short here. Mm. And so that's why, like, typically I do like a four here, and then go basically to a zero taper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. The thing is, right, when you've got a prominent bone stretch like yours, where it concaves, mm. basically where the glasses line is, right, just here, a taper makes it worse. Oh, really? Because it's concaving already. So if you're going short here and then trying to blend out, you're going out, in, out. Just creating like Just a, you're creating a divot, almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, essentially. But you're creating, you're making that more prominent. 
How can you go in and out? So I would always say just keep a bit more hair there. Still have it nice and still have it like short bush because it's a, a four on top still the same as what you normally have. Yeah. But a three, what it would do, it would just fill out the face a bit more. Right. And then it would fill out this bit here. Yeah. And it would, it, it's like, um, a lot of what we do is like smoke and mirrors, right? A lot of what, what we do as a job is just trying to make something look like it's not, right? I love that. So that, that's essentially that what we try do. try and make you look good. <laughs> Basically, yeah. It's a bit like the Harrods window at Christmas. It's all paper mache, but it looks like gold. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, yeah, it's yeah. not real. It's yeah. just, it's made to look good, right? So that's what we do a lot of the time, in, 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 as, as honest as I can be. So that's what, that's what I, if you came into me and was like, uh, like say like six weeks old or eight weeks old haircuts, do whatever you think works for me. Yeah. That's what I would do. All right. But obviously we don't have that. So what do we do in place of that? Now, what would you be happy doing in place of that? If you, you... you can honestly do whatever you like. Like I'm not, I'm not fussy about haircuts again. I actually just like, I trust your opinion to be honest. So like okay. whatever you think is best, then let's go for it. Okay. It's not like there's that much to work with. <laughs> so it's how damaging can you do? Yeah, essentially. Um, I mean, what I would probably do for you then, is probably take the four that put the four on top and then just line out the, the the hairline and then just keep the back and sides because then that way you 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 can there's no point in just going back to zero if if you if you want to see what I think would work best for you mm. you probably if you want to give that if you want to give that a shot and see what you think because then day it's only my opinion right it's it's my opinion is based on face shapes and things like that so it's but it's not always like it might not be your taste yeah. you know, it doesn't always mean it has to be your taste it based on my opinion if I was you what I what I would probably do is do a four on top. And then just line out the edges and, and grow it into a four, into a three. Okay. That's what I would do. I, I mean, you're only talking like, you know, what's that now? It's probably like a two, I'd say. Maybe maybe not, maybe a bit. That's a little. Yeah, it's just bang. It's about, about two. So you're not far off, really. It's just the taper that's killed it off a little bit, really. It's yeah. this little bit here, because that's so much shorter than here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the taper. So, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably say you're maybe about probably about two or three weeks off okay. having it done. The thing is, if you best way to think of this, right? Look at Brad Pitt when he has a buzz cut, right? Brad Pitt has a very very strong jawline, right? Yeah. Very wide face, and he has a similar length all over. Now, I don't think it suits him. Let me let me get my phone and I'll show you. You tell me you agree or disagree on this one. I, I don't know. I'll show the, I'll show the the camera as well. I mean, it's a tough one because you are showing me Brad Pitt, who's. Yeah, but not everyone suits everything, right? No, I don't think everyone suits everything, right? So, yeah. Now, it's that picture there. Right, like, I can't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you look at that, that being all one length, I think really makes his jaw wide. Yeah. Whereas imagine if he took the sides down a touch and left a bit more length on top. Yeah. I think that would have been perfect. Because I always do that. If, I, if you get a comb and you cover up little bits, I always think how much better his face shape would look if it was like that. Yeah, more straight out rather than kind of this. More, yeah, yeah, rather than just round, right? Because it being so round on the top creates a very kind of like, it, it doesn't always benefit the jawline, especially him, because he's got such a wide jaw. Yeah. Um, when he's shorter, it suits him okay, when it's shorter. But yeah, that top's yeah, longer yeah. than the sides on that one, I think. Because his face looks more elongated, I think, on yeah. that one. Do you know what I mean? And then if you look at him with more hair, when he's kind of grown out the bush cut, do you see the difference in his face shape when he's got a bit more hair on top and less on the yeah, side? It softens it a bit. It softens it, yeah. Though. His jaw doesn't look really wide, it looks a lot soft. I know it's a different angle, but you can see how much more shape there is to the jaw. Never thought Friday morning at 8 a.m. we'd just be staring at photos of Brad Pitt. I know, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to my world, mate. Uh, I, 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 I'm generally looking at Bradley Cooper at 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, mate. Um, <laughs> For me personally, one of the things I love about having short hair is just like not needing to fuss about it. Like you just wake up and like go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's, it's, I, I agree. It's, it, it is a good, um, it is, it is a good thing to have for yeah. sure. If you, if you are that kind of person, you want it a bit shorter. But I think, um, I think if you're after what I perceive yeah. to be the perfect one for you, yeah, a little bit more length on the sides nice. and just a tiny bit longer on top would be good for you. Let's do it. Um, yeah. yeah. So what I'll do is, I think if we, if we, we we'll probably just have to grow it out. Um, and I'll, I'll just, but I'll make it look like as though it's fresh. Okay, so I'll make it look as though you've had a fresh haircut today. Okay. So I do the four on top. And then I'll clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up here. I'll line up the back and sides, and then I'll go from there. Beautiful. And you have a little look, all right? Thank so you. yeah, it'll be about probably about three weeks or so before it's at the, the sort of perfect length that you need, but more so here than anything else. And then what if you were going to ask for it again? You just say like four on top, four three on top, and three on the back and sides. And, and just don't, just make sure they don't do a taper. And then just say like tidy up around the edge. Yeah, and just say and just say tidy around the edge. Neckline's fine to be tapered. 
that's totally fine because you need that roundness at the back. So if you did a, a skin taper here, that's that's cool, right? Yeah. Because you've got the roundness coming into a bit more of an angle at the bottom. But it's the sides. Okay. That's the thing that brings that that changes everything when you look at you. Okay. It's the sides. So that's probably what I would would yeah suggest. So just ask them just just do four on top, three on three on the back and sides, tapered neck. Okay. Just tapered neck. All right. I started watching in lockdown when I started buzzing my head just in and then I, I've, I don't know why I find your videos quite like therapeutic in a way. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. can see why though because when I get a haircut, if I'm getting a haircut and I'm getting clippers on it, I used to always fall asleep. And I think it's the, I think it's, it's the, the ASMR, monotonous. Like, it is. Yeah. I think um, it's the consistent sound of yeah. this buzzing around your head. That's what I think it is. But I, I won't lie. Like I've I've had the same. And then when someone's sort of like delicately sort of cutting your ears and stuff like that and you're falling asleep, you're a bit like, what am I doing here? My hands are... <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. My head's in the hands of another man and I'm just like soft, gently that, That's it. People don't realise. <laughs> people don't realise. Like, I always think this when I'm, when I'm talking to somebody, right, about um, when, we're, when, we're, when we're talking about like, you know, like cutting hair and whatnot, right? Mm. I always say like, the, 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 there's a lot of psychology to a, a haircut, right? There's a lot of psychology to what for, for both you know for not not just the barber shop but like just hair in general right is your your sort of under a gown you're covered up right you're you you're vulnerable right in a sense because you're not you're not you know you, you're just sitting there in the at the sort of mercy of me right you know what i mean you, you're covered up with the gown everything else you're letting me into your personal space without realizing it yeah. right now imagine if we're on the tube together and i just came over to you and started rubbing your hair <laughs> You know, you'd probably think I'm a crazy person, right? And so when you think about it, you what what I'm doing is essentially that, right? I'm I, I'm I'm touching your I'm touching your head, touching your you know what I mean, whatever else. But you've allowed me to, so by you letting me in, that's where you start to relax a bit more. That's where you start to open up. That's why do you think like obviously you know everyone always says like the barber knows everything about the person. We do because people open up to us because of the psychology that you've let me into your personal space. Oh, well, I, I was saying to a mate who's. He's, he's got some troubles with his girlfriend. I said, like, do you do therapy or anything like that? And he, his response was, no, but I get a haircut. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just tell him, my barber knows everything. Yeah, yeah, it's And true. He, he even said, like, the barber's so un underqualified, but he just unloads onto him every four weeks. We, ther <laughs> we, we therapize people without realizing, you know? Yeah. But no, I've had, I've had it where people have come back to me, like, more often when they're going through, they're going through tough times. But I'll be honest with you, though, it's not just a clientele who gets from it, who get anything from it. We do. Now, if I'm going through a tough time, right, I'll talk about a problem in the third person. So, like, say, for example... No, stop it. Once you, you feign your story yeah. as if it was someone else. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I'm not going to go... Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to... Someone's going to sit in my chair and I've just gone through, like, say, I don't know, a major breakup or whatever, right? I'm not going to sit there and go, hey... I'm struggling. I'm struggling here. Because I'm, I'm cutting their hair. I'm, do, yeah. I'm doing their job. They're going to think, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, not quite, I'm not ready to cut their hair. So what I'll do is I'll do it in a third person mode. So I'll be like, I, I, or, or say for example, like say, say, I don't know, a friend said something to me or whatever, right? And I've yeah, and maybe you're, I've, you're I've read into them him. or whatever. I'll just say like, what do you think of this? And I'll get like, the, I'll get like a second opinion. So it's almost like I do my own market research for myself in do a way, you, right? Do you pick and choose who you decide to ask the question? Yeah. Like let's say. I come into the chain, you're like, oh, he's a wrong one. Like, I'm not going to ask him for his opinion. <laughs> no, but like... I don't think like that. I mean, I wouldn't ask a new client. Okay. Well, or maybe I would. It depends on how you... I think they depends on the bond you, you have with that person. Because, I mean, I, I've... You know, the, the bond we have as barbers and hairdressers and stylists, or whatever you want to call us, yeah. is so is so strong with with some clients. We're like best mates. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I speak to some of my clients more than I speak to like, people I've known for 20 years. Yeah. And I've only known them six months. But I get on with them so much better. Because I don't know, I don't know what for what reason. I just we just click. It's a and bit ritual. It's like ritual based as well. If you're coming every six weeks, it's like you know what yeah. cadence you're seeing. Them. That's you know right, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Like... It is like that. Yeah, for sure. It's a bit. It's a bit like. Um, it's a bit of a weird one because like a lot of my clients, I get obviously I get a lot of new clients, but I've I've always had like I've had a strong core clientele for about. Well, well, since I moved to London, really, probably like 17, 18 years, right? Mm. So I've had a really strong core clientele from like, from like year one. And I've, I've still got some of them clients today. You know, even though I've moved around shops, I've, I've opened shops, I've moved areas, whatever else, I've still kept a lot of the core clients, right? right. Nice. Which, is a, which, is a, which is a testament to like our, our, our sort of relationship as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what's my longest friendship like. Well, put it this way, I've... We, we always laugh about this. I've got one, one particular client who I say, you're my longest ever relationship. 
Because <laughs> it's true. I've got. I've. I'm, I've been with. I've been. I've been his barber longer than I've been with partners. When I've been with friends, you know what I mean. Like it's. I, I've. I've no. I've. I've. He's seen me through everything, right? Yeah. From stressed out when I opened my shop to, you know, being really relieved when I moved, and you know what I mean. Like he's been through. He's seen every sort of. He's, he, I think he's seen every side of me, really. You know, what I mean, he's seen me. He's seen me not speaking when I've been a bit stressed out. He'd see, he's seen me upset. He's seen me. He's seen me angry. You know, what yeah, I mean, he's yeah. seen me in all different, fa- all different facets, really. You know, you know, I mean, these, these some of my clients, like you know, during lockdown and stuff, they paid for like ten haircuts off me during lockdown, even though they knew, even though I wasn't giving them a haircut. Oh, really? They, well, they paid they for like a year's worth of haircuts in front. Yeah, basically, yeah, they gave me that little kind of like, that's, you know, because I wasn't earning any money. That's so kind. I know, I, wasn't, I know exactly. I mean, there are things that you, I never expected off anybody. Yeah. Like, I, I genuinely never expected that off anybody at all. You know. But you get it, and and you, you realise that it's not just a it's not just a haircut to some people. It's like a, you are you are building a friendship with these yeah. people as well. You know, it's great. Oh, no, you make me feel bad now because I like. Did I, you not support your barber in lockdown? No, I, I definitely <laughs> didn't give him him in advance. To be honest, so oh, you just like, bought a pair of clippers and did it yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was heinous going through lockdown, clipper in your hair. We oh, had right. like we lived. So, in this... yeah, I was gonna say, tell me about that. Tell me about how it, how it, how you first sort of picked the clippers up. Then what did you? Uh, we... What did you think when you first picked them up? Do you think, oh, this will be easy? Well, you just don't like. No, it wasn't it more like the difficulty nature. I was like, I was, I went into it accepting you look, you would look rubbish at the end of it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like it's lockdown. Like who cares? No one's no one's seeing you except for your girlfriend. Yeah, that's true. And so I did it and. I think my girlfriend didn't look at me for like three days or something. Oh, she was wow. like, never again are yeah. doing that. But then we had this, we lived in this flat with like, it was a big kind of a one room mezzanine thing, but one of the walls was just a full mirror. Oh, wow. It's to make it look bigger. But it does mean that like you do catch yourself more often than you, you typically would. So now you know how I feel when I'm trying to get new hair, grow my hair or because oh, I see myself more. See, I went the other way where I kept seeing myself. I was like, could be shorter. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. like skin guard shaving my oh, head. Oh, wow. Look like this That's, thing. That is the problem with bush cuts, mate. You go shorter and shorter yeah. and shorter and shorter. Yeah, that, that is what happens, yeah. Yeah, the, the, Unfortunately, the, so. the reviews were not good. I can imagine. But. I can imagine. Right, I'm just going to tape your neck out now as well. So this is going to look like a brand new fresh haircut, okay? Even though we haven't touched the sides, okay? Now we can do this because we can get the curvature of the head at the back. So this allows us to go like a little bit tighter. So even though Robin is used to having a taper, we can still give him a taper. It's just where the taper needs to be positioned. Now, for me, looking straight on at his face shape, a taper shouldn't be down to zero on the sides. It should be the same length as the, the rest of the hair on the back and sides. But on the neckline, we can taper that out. So it, it can still look nice and fresh. It can still We can still give Robin what he's used to having in some respect, but without having to sort of take that taper right down on the sides as well. So we're just trying to keep it a bit more one length. So yeah, you fit. So what was what was the length you went to at first on the bus cut? Like what did you start off on? I'm not sure. The grey is ten millimeter. Ten millimeters, yeah. like well, that's that's roughly about three. Yeah, yeah. and then it gradually uh, over the course of it wasn't even long; it was like a week because you've got so much time in lockdown. <laughs> you're just like, I'm bored. What's yeah. there to do? It's like you either you like clap for carers, watch Boris, and then brush yeah. your hair. Kind that's of, kind it. Of, yeah, so. exactly. Do, yeah. do you know what's funny though? Right, is even though like um, I'm sure there's loads of barbers who can listen to this and relate to this because like what you're saying there is going shorter each time. I find that's what we do as barbers because we get haircuts. Well. Normally, normally, like I remember back in the day, I used to get haircuts every every week, right? Because yeah. I could, right? It was just you just it was a walk in place. You were supposed to just jump in the chair when no one was in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever, right? That's yeah. what you could do. Now, I I noticed that barbers who have who have shaved heads end up with it really short by by about a month later or yeah. something because they get in the chair and they're yeah, just so used to it. every week they're getting a they're getting a, they're getting a buzz cut yeah. and they're like, oh, do you know what? Go a little bit shorter this time around, and then they like it. And then the problem is because it grows out. And then it starts to look long to you, even though it was the original length you buzzed it to the first time round. It looks longer to you. You end up going shorter and shorter and shorter. So that's why when people come in to me with skin fades and they go, "Oh, my hair grows really fast," you know, you're like, "It doesn't. 
It goes the same pace. <laughs> it's just that you lose scalp exposure. So to you, you think it grows fast, but I guarantee you, it grows exactly the same pace as the last guy who was in the gym. Yeah, it's the it's, I, the it's the perception of of you thinking it's got long because you've got rid of scalp. Do you I, know what I mean? I will think I need a haircut every two weeks now. Yeah. Just because I'll get it like round the ears, and then within like five days, you're just like you're just noticing. Oh, it's a bit like untidy or whatever. And yeah, that's right. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is just perception. It really is. But it makes sense. Like, I understand why. I mean, I've been that person as well. I under, I totally understand why that happens, yeah. you know what I mean? So let me just uh, go over the back and sides just to make sure we get a little long bits. So is the girlfriend accepted the buzz cut now? Is she, is she okay with it? She's not the girlfriend anymore. All right. Actually, so. <laughs> but that wasn't because of the buzz cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, but yeah, unfortunately not. Okay, that was just life. Yeah, yeah that, was that was life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, she didn't just see like, this is England and be like, I'm out of here kind of thing. I, well, I had a lot, of, a lot of clients coming in with similar stories about their partners and like box dyes. You know, What's people using dye? so people buying the colour from the supermarket and oh, doing it themselves, yeah, yeah. and everyone going ginger. That's yeah, basically I, what happens. I mean, yeah, yeah. Everyone did that at like twelve, thirteen when they got the yeah, M and M haircut. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone did it back then. Yeah, but lockdown was like you know you've got you've got some women who are, you know there was, I had I had some some friends uh, hairdresser friends who used to like do this thing where they'd send out a colour kit box. Right. So they would basically make their colour for the client, put everything they need in the right the right um, the right consistency yeah. of, of peroxide and everything else. And then write a little step by step of how to do it, yeah. which I thought was a great idea. But obviously, not everyone's hairdresser was doing that. Yeah. So some had to go and get box dyes. Now that was them going to like you know Morrison's or whatever and get, <laughs> getting like the Clairol, um, you know, blonding kit or whatever. Yeah. And obviously, with no real experience of what to do, just seeing like, the thing is, I think I think the problem is with our job, right? When you get so good at it, you make it look easy. <laughs> I think that's the, I think that's the, the the honest thing, right? You get you get you get good at your job. You make it look easy. It's like people who code. It's like people who do everything right. It's. It... I mean, you're the with with all due respect, you're the perfect crime there because like you do the you do your job, you put it on YouTube, and then the obvious thing is like, oh yeah, I'll give that a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then before you know it, you're turning up in your chair like, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry everyone. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But but I mean, lockdown made people realise that my job isn't easy. I think because yeah. the minute you pick up a pair of clippers, you're like, okay, what next? You know what I mean? Like I put it over the top, but how do I do the back? How do, how, do, how do I blend it in? How do I get a fade like that? How do I, six you know mirrors, I mean? six yeah, mirrors. That's nice. it. Yeah, exactly. That's right. But I think that's what, what made people realize that our jobs are harder. But obviously, again, to color, color is like a science. Like if you, if you, ever, if you ever stood and watched a colorist mix up a color and then watch the end result, it is absolutely, it's like pure art yeah. science together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how you can replicate that in a box dye, I don't know. Right. But I, I had a lot of, a lot of, text messages from clients going, hey Dan, I need a bit of advice. And they're like, my wife's done this or the husband's <laughs> done this. And you know, one of, the, one of my clients, his, his, I love his husband dyed his hair from like, he was going gray and he dyed it darker, but he got a black box dye instead uh, of like a goat, yeah, a goat yeah. just for men thing. Yeah. And he texts me, I remember him just saying, it's like grease in our house. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Danny Zuko walking around crying his eyes out. And he sent me a picture and his hair was like purple. It was that dark. Did and you I was have like, brill, oh my God. Brill cream out as well, and that's not nope. slicking it. I think it was wet when he showed me, so it did look a bit Zanny Zuko ish, actually, yeah. But, um, but no, it was, quite, it was quite funny, to be honest. It was, uh, I think that, but again, you know, that was lockdown for you, wasn't it? You know what I mean? We all, did, we all did some funny things in lockdown, right? The only dye one I've ever done is, you know, you used to get, I think it was like the Justin Timberlake and Sync era, and I was probably like 11 or 12, and you yeah. got those hats. Yeah. And then oh, pulled you pulled the pull things out. through. Yeah. At the age of 11, I thought I looked like. The bee's knees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you did though? Nah. But I, Mate, you did at the I, time. <laughs> I promise you. I, I, I've got pictures from, I, I found, you know what's funny, right? I was talking to a mate the other day and we, I was trying to show him what I looked like when I had my dyed blonde hair. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I'm going to try and find my MySpace because that's the only picture I've got is on a MySpace page. you still got right? a MySpace Well, account. no, it's not there anymore. I looked, it's gone. They've deleted me. But, um, <laughs> we need but, to get this blonde guy off. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. But I, I had like, they, they were where all my pictures were from that, that era. Yeah. Because don't, because people forget, right? Facebook didn't come. Facebook wasn't really prominent when I was in my teens. I don't think it existed in my teens. So like, and I'm probably I'm showing my age, but yeah, two thousand six, two thousand seven. Like, yeah, but I I was a, I, you know I was a teenager in like the, the late nineties, early two thousands. So like, yeah, yeah. all my silly things I did with my hair were were before camera phones. Really, you know what I mean? Like good quality camera phones. Anyway, you're lucky it's um, not documented. I know, mate. I know. God, I thought I looked quality though, mate. But in reality. 
it was a, I look like, you know, all I can say I look like, you know, when you get a Parker jacket and you get that mixed coloured fur around the neck. <laughs> that's basically what I look like. I had all these different colours in my hair, mate. I look, I look like a, a sort of the hood of a Parker jacket, to be fair. But, but I, I thought I looked great at the time, to be fair. I was funny, I was watching, have you seen the Beckham documentary? Yeah. It's like, I was watching that and obviously like it kind of, throughout you see all of his haircuts and whatever. And yeah. One of them I remember like, I remember being like a fourteen-year-old and having an A4 printout of a David Beckham haircut and just taking it into the to the hairdresser and being like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe like this yeah, guy yeah, of course. At 14. Mate, it still happens now. It still happens now. Just on your phone. We just don't have printouts anymore. We just have pictures from Pinterest on there now. It still happens. Beckham is still very much a trendsetter. Like, I mean, he did. I think every UK UK barber and hairdresser can agree on this. He literally put our job on the map because without him being so open, being so famous, but being so open about chat about trying new things on his hair. Where do you think we'd be now? Do you think it was actually him? Yeah, 100 million percent. Really? million percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, deser he deserves a, a, knight, a knighthood just for making our industry <laughs> just, popular, just you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sir David Beckham for, for contributions to the hair industry, mate, I'll be honest. I swear to God, he does. It's, it's, it's incredible. Like he's, um, he, I mean, obviously you've got to think of the person behind the, the the hair as well you know you've got to think of the, the barber or the hairdresser doing all that as well having the having the creative mind to do that as, at the same time but when you think of Beckham like Beckham was the was uh, 2006 you know g products weren't even really being used in hair that much do you know what I mean yeah it, he he literally created a whole generation of of, of people w willing to try out a, a, a new haircut and we want to put product in the hair and everything else. Yeah, he was such a such a pinnacle kind of um, movement for, for, by him just doing that. Seriously, what are you uh, what are you doing when you do like the trim in the front and the sides and stuff like that? It's because like I never really know what I should do with the the hairline. You just like, keep it. The, you just keep it the same length. And I, I always just taper it slightly because it's your hair. You've got a really quite a strong cow's lick almost here. It goes yeah. like quite a, like basically right across the front. So you've got an instant parting in your hair. You've got an instant kind of quiff over yeah. to one side. So I just you just go against, you just go against the grain. When you do anything like this, you go against the grain to remove okay. length. So we're going against the way the hair grows, and then I just taper the front a little bit shorter just to give that shorter finish. Okay. But I think, well, already you look really good. <laughs> Thank you. I do. I think it looks. I think you suit when you, if you see your dress sense as well. I think this kind of all over buzz cut looks as though you're you've just got a buzz cut. It doesn't look like you're trying to achieve something too much. I feel yeah. like it looks more casual than what anything with a taper in does as well. So that's a four on top, and then the back and sides are the same. But I've just edged out the haircuts, so just lined out with the the mini with the, the trimmers, and then just tapered your neck in as well. Oh yeah, smart. So it looks like a fresh haircut. We now need a box style to get rid of these greys on the side. Don't no, 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 no. Right, I'll give this a little rinse out for you, mate. Thank okay? you very much. What's the what's the end goal that you're going for? The end goal for me yeah. is uh, I'm just looking to get long, very long hair, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to go maybe to like here. Oh, really? Maybe the logo is there, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just just go out from there. Yeah, just, we'll just go, go through there and then just see what, what happens, yeah. Tied up or are you going sort of cave, yeah, caveman? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't got there. I don't know. I haven't really sort of worked it out. So just want to say the reason why I wash it is just because when you come in, it does lie a bit flatter, so I always just do that one quick wash just to get rid of any little loose bits. You can hear some hair coming off, you see? Yeah. They're the bits that we missed when we when it was dry. So that's why I always like to wash the hair afterwards, just to make sure we get every little bit. But um, yeah, in terms of my hair, I don't really know um, where... My end goal is just long, right? So that's why I'm not really getting cut. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm doing the old school method, right? Of kind of just doing what I can what, what, with the hair that I've got. I'm not getting maintenance cuts or anything like that at all. I'm not really going down that route because I, I don't really feel like I need to, if you know what I mean. I, I feel like I'm, I'm okay with growing it as it is. Yeah. I'm totally okay with growing it as it is. The reason I suggest maintenance cuts to people is because people don't can't grow their hair. They're not used to it. Because I, I've, been in, I've been in and around hair for 22 years, so I know what I need to do to get it long. You just mean they get frustrated. Yeah, it, it's of? just to stop people yeah. from, sh from cutting it off. Yeah. That's why I always say about maintenance comes. Obviously, they do work as well. They do add shape and they do create a, you can create a texture with them. You can create a whole new look. But for what I'm going for, I'm trying to preserve all the length that I need. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do. I mean, so there's no point in me really trying to get it, get it cut. You know what I mean? That's what, what I'm trying to do. There's just no point. Right, are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Now, let's just try and go it out for that, for that amount of time and see what 
what you think of it. Yeah, I like it that it's not so severe on the sides as it normally is, to be honest. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think you really suit that. I think you'll you'll notice a bit of a difference when you see. So I, I think it looks softer on you. Yeah. And I th and I feel because you've got such a strong face shape, I feel the softer haircut does look does look better on you. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, nice. So probably, yeah, so I'd probably just stick to a three, have a four on top, so it looks more one length, but it's still got that slight hint of of a of of sort of shape in there. And then just keep going for the tape on the neck, just so it looks nice and sharp and tidy. Because right. you still have that. It's my, you know, it it can look different from from behind than it does than it does straight on. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But you've got to try and cover all bases. So that's why I'm saying if you want the taper, still have the taper, but just not on the sides. Do you know what I mean? The total opposite of what what I'm going for. <laughs> I was. I was. I do feel like doing it. I do feel like doing it some days. You know, mate. I'm not gonna lie. I do oh, feel like doing to, it. So I just don't have that patience. Like yeah. I don't even have the mirror anymore or the clippers. But like yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm going. Wait, I, I'm going. But then I think what I'll do is I think when I get to the end goal, I'll go back to this. Yeah. I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll just grow it. Say I've done it. Get get all the advice along the way, and then just go back to yeah, show, that's the journey. Yeah. Well, why not? Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Very Cheers, much. mate. Thank you. Thank you.